Hello everyone, my name is Rick, Rick van Bruggen from Neo Technology, and uh, we're recording another podcast again, yuppie! And today I'm uh, on a Skype call with Johan, Johan Svensson from Neo. Hi Johan. Hi Rick, how are you? I'm very well in you. <laughs> the, the sun is very shining well, over thanks. here. <laughs> uh, so it's Johan, uh, oh, okay. So, so um, Johan, I, I, you've been one of the founders of Neo, right? So, uh, but lots of people might not know you. Would you mind introducing yourself a little bit, if you don't mind? Sure. So, as you said, I'm, I'm one of the founders of uh, Neo VA, and uh, I'm currently the CTO uh, at Neo Technology. And uh, I've been working with uh, Neo basically since. 2002, I would say. Uh, uh -huh. So it's uh, been a long time now. Uh, um, uh, yeah, and uh, that is a long time, right? How did it start? How, in yeah. the, how did you guys uh, get started with Neo? Yeah, so we, me, Emil, and Peter were working at uh, this other company uh, where we were building a content management system. And the, <clears throat> we had a lot of trouble pushing in the, uh, the data we wanted to store into a relational database. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, I, I was mostly working at the, uh, uh, what we called, uh, uh, I th think we called it the kernel team or core team, something, uh, uh, trying to get data in and out of the database. Uh, and it turned out that the the things we tried to model uh, wasn't a very good fit for a relational database. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, where this new model uh, came from. Uh, and I, I was not initially part of, of uh, being, uh, it was mostly Peter and Emil who actually uh, built, uh, and came up with this new model. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then I, I got uh, started started working with it when we tried to build a system that, that couldn't handle this. Was that really for so performance it, reasons and stuff like that? Or what, what, was the, what was the main reason for you know deciding, hey, we need something new here? I think it was twofold. It, one thing was performance, and the other thing was uh, uh, modeling capabilities. So the, the way we solved it in, uh, in that system before we had Neo was basically uh, store everything uh, lazily and read everything up in memory uh, on startup. So my first project when I started working at the company was to, to actually optimize startup time. Uh, that was four hours at the moment, and we got it down to 30 minutes. Oh, no way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but, I mean, uh, it became clear that the, the tool we were using was not the right tool. Uh, uh, we had... Um, Lots of hierarchies. Yep. Sometimes the hierarchy could even have multiple parents, which which makes it a graph. We didn't think of it as a graph back then, but uh, well, we we talked more about networks and these hierarchies interlinked linked into each other in various way. So it became uh, many, many dimensions uh, and and really really hard to 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 get into uh, uh, rows and columns. Mm -hmm. And how, how difficult was it for for you to to create like a the minimal product, so to speak? You know, was, was it months? Was it years? How, how much time did you spend on like the first versions? Yeah, so we we start first. We did just a few proof of concept versions uh, 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 that I was not part of uh, in using AGBs uh, and. And what we got from that was basically that the model works really, really well. Uh, it solves our modeling problems, but it didn't solve our performance problems. So then we tried to do an, a new version more directly on top of on Postgres. Yeah. Uh, and that still didn't work out for us. Mm -hmm. And then I've been experimenting uh, on my own because Java had, had just released the uh, Java and I/O and a new way of, do, of doing IOs. So I've been experimenting some with uh, our own native, like building a native solution for, for, for storing graphs. And it, it turned out that uh, that one performed much, much better. So, oh, so uh, in, that, 
that was when you started to really, you know, dry, have your own file system format and all those types of things. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay. So uh, we started building that, I believe, in was it mid two thousand and two or or maybe early two thousand and two. Can remember and and then we put the, the first system in production in 2003 and, and how did uh, when when did it start uh, taking the shape that neo4j has today you know like a database like a full-on database when when would you say was like the first version of neo as a database yeah well you could argue that that the the, the first version that we put in production was was a database uh, I mean, it had all the, the the requirements, but on the other hand, it was very uh, uh, very early uh, and and built quite fast. So yeah. uh, it uh, it always takes many years before you have a stable uh, database. I believe uh, what's his name, Kurt Monash, says that it takes at least five years to build a database. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, so we had uh, lots of problems uh, with it uh, in the beginning, of course, but it was only hosting our own system, so we could uh, easily handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, then, then we saw that this is absolutely something, a technology that we could use in, in other projects, and, and we could even use this technology uh, as as as, uh, as a creating a product uh, around it, yeah. but uh, th there was no real way of doing that back then because uh, uh, object-oriented databases had, had just failed. So so there was no one who was challenging uh, the relational databases back yeah. then. So we didn't do that. But then Dynamo came, came around and, and things started happening in 2006. So so that's when we. Actually, uh, span out the 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 IP in a separate company and and, and started uh, the new technology. Yeah, that's when we started we wave. That's when we started surfing the NoSQL wave, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that came uh, a few years later, I guess, yeah. before someone put it, put a name yeah. on that. But, but but yeah, essentially, yeah. Okay, well, so so you mentioned already it was around performance and and modeling. Those were the two things. You know, are there any other things that that, that you think are, are are super great about you know graph databases today, or why you think that people should be looking at it right now? I think it enables people to to solve problems that they haven't been able to solve before. If it, Basically, any field, if you look at it today, that stores data and stores data in, a, in, in an old-fashioned way, they're not, not making use of the, their data. The, 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 the thing that comes to mind always when I think about this is actually health care. Uh, I, I think that uh, we could do a lot of things in, in there just to to help the world uh, or help doctors make better uh, diagnosis and so on. There's so many things we can do. The data is already there. We're just not making sense of it. We're not making the and, connections. And if, if, exactly. So if we start doing that, uh, we, we're going to have a, a, a much better society, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that also sort of brings me to to sort of my last question. You know, where where is this going? You know, where 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 do you where do you uh, see uh, Neo as a technology going? But also, where do you see the industry going? Uh, any any interesting comments about that? Yeah. So, well, I, I'm I wouldn't be doing this, uh, but but unless I was convinced that. Uh, we have something big. I actually think that uh, uh, the majority of data will, will soon be stored in, in uh, graph databases. Uh, and, and that soon, that may be two, three, four, five, ten years, I don't know, but, but I think that's where we are going. Yeah. And, and uh, when, when it comes to technology, I, I have a lot of things <laughs> on, on my mind. I, I don't know how, how technical you want to get there, but, but no, well, just the big uh, things, we, right? We just, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we just released two two, which is a, a very nice and 
fulfillment. Uh, I think it's our most solid release uh, so far, and and uh, uh, it it basically lays the foundation for us to to be doing a lot of uh, work that we have wanted to do for a long time but have not been able to uh, do because of old legacy uh, things. Uh, I mean, so, some of the code uh, I wrote back in 2003 uh, is, is still there, but it, it's getting less and less and less. And, and uh, right, right now, I, I would say that we, we have uh, come to a point where I think we can accelerate uh, uh, a lot of the uh, things we want to build. And uh, uh, 2.3 is going to be uh, uh, something that improves uh, both uh, stability and, and uh, scalability and performance over 2.2. Yep. And then we have uh, three overlays coming that will introduce some uh, great things, uh, specifically around how to interact with the product, uh, but also uh, in continue the in internal work that, that you don't see so much of a user. As, as a user, like the product surface doesn't change that much, but it's still, it's going to be uh, a lot of changes. And uh, uh, much of this is actually driven from how uh, uh, hardware evolves. Uh, if you look at how, how a computer looks today and how it will look tomorrow, that's very different from what it looked like uh, 10 years years ago or 20, 30 years ago uh, oh, yeah. uh, when uh, many of the other databases were designed and built. So, uh -huh. so, so um, I think that we will see great things coming. Fantastic. Okay. Well, uh, Johan, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I, I know there's so many things we could talk about, but uh, we want to keep these fairly short. So I uh, really appreciate you making the effort to uh, come, uh, come on uh, online. Thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Have a good one. Bye. All right.